anyways, and um, a good case study of that is I just um, actually held my first paid event on Eventbrite, and this was really embarrassing because I have probably 400 test events in my account, and I've held numerous, uh, every get together at my parents' house is on Eventbrite, you know, and so um, I joined the board of a children's organization, um, and because there's so much time, and, uh, and I was to sort of uh, valiantly said, oh, I'll take care of the ticketing for this for your fall fundraiser. And then I was like, oh my god, what did I just say? Because this was sort of a lesser known charitable organization and they really needed people to come in the door. And so I had to rely it, a lot on our product to actually do what I said it was going to do. And that was a, actually a really scary moment for me. And so what I did was I priced the tickets low, but I created a donation field. I created a donation field that said I cannot attend, I'd like to donate. And I created a donation field that said I am attending and I want to you know, support the organization more. And it was amazing. Everybody who bought a ticket also donated. Like it was, I'd say that like 90% of the attendees paid for the ticket and also donated and then came to the silent auction. And that was a, a validation for our this product that we had sort of uh, launched in the early days. Um, and now we have a program called Eventbrite for Causes. So as we become engaged with charitable, charitable organizations, we thought, well, um, we can offer them a discount, right, as a lot of people do, or we could actually try to create a community around event organizers who are trying to raise money through, through events and really sort of try to give back and create this like dual relationship there. And so what we did was we, we launched Event Right for Causes, which is um, much more of a community uh, idea than just a, a cut on our on our ticket fee. But it, it is sort of a, a discount for nonprofits as well. But what we want to do is really help them learn best practices of how to successfully fundraise through an event. Because now that I've joined this board and I've been in a couple fundraising meetings, events is not the 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 lowest hanging fruit to raising money for your organization, but it certainly can be very effective in not only raising money, but also raising awareness and furthering your message. Hi. How did you come up to this two uh, 99 cents plus 99 cents? Sure, so it's 2.5% uh, plus 99 cents, and the way it was, I'll, I'll be completely honest, it was a bit arbitrary. Uh, we looked at the space, the existing space, we looked at the ticket fees that were the, the basically the median there, and we priced ourselves as the lowest priced offering. So that's kind of how we took a stab at that. It wasn't as it, it didn't take a lot of thinking for us. We sort of wanted to more um, concentrate on the product we were creating. We knew that if we created a great product, it wouldn't matter if eventually somebody came along that was like a little bit less expensive than us. It's um, or a little bit lower fee. It's. It's, that's not really what we're what we're looking at as a business. We're looking at the overall volume. So we get really excited about the hundred million dollar ticket sales that we helped our event organizers, uh, you know, earn in in a year because. Um, the revenue comes later. If you don't have the volume, you're never going to get the revenue, right? So our fees are really low, and we've been questioned about that. You know, we've been questioned on both sides. So we've been questioned by uh, event organizers who say that it's actually because of their ticket prices, it's, it's too costly. And then on the flip side, we've been questioned by people who say, how are you ever going to get, a, you know, enough revenue, you know, charging this little of a fee? And for us, we just really, really stay focused on the volume. And so for us to, to answer the, the customer side, we talk about uh, using our service and promoting your event and selling pre-sales, so the power of pre-sales of selling a ticket before the event is so incredibly powerful for you. So if you're selling two more tickets for your event than you normally would by just sending out you know, an email and, and collecting checks or collecting money at the door, um, that basically sort of makes up for any sort of small margin that, that you could possibly find by just you know, trying to do this yourself. Um, and then on the flip side, we, we know that if we have the volume and if we concentrate on selling more tickets for our event organizers, that we're going to have a sustainable business. And so, um, you know, our interests are aligned with our customers because we only make money when they make money. We don't charge any other fees. So, that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> Yeah, so um, 
honestly say that I I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. So I uh, um, I've never felt like I wanted to walk away from Eventbrite. I actually felt the opposite. I felt fearful that I would have to once I had our baby. I didn't know what that looked like afterwards and how you have a baby and do a startup at the same time. For Kevin, I think that he always wants to be challenged, and so he actually has had a few times um, where he he questioned along the way if if you know if he should just be doing event writer, he should be doing something else as well. And um, I sort of learned to just ride those out and know that, uh, that you know, in, in the world of startups, something always comes up, and that's always been the case for us. So in any case in which, you know, we were feeling like, huh, I wonder if, you know, maybe, you know, he oftentimes wanted to just hand the reins to me and kind of go off and do something else. It's very distracting being a serial entrepreneur because you're always, like, stimulated, and he's, oops, he's also an angel. He's also an angel investor, so he's always involved in different ideas and, and startups, and so it can be like sort of, you know, you bright shiny object. Um, but I think that for, for, I sort of just quietly sort of like, you know, guided him towards uh, uh, remaining committed and, and focused on what we had going on, and gosh, it's, I mean, it's completely, you know, paid off. I think he's really happy that he, that he stayed with Ben Price. So just kind of knowing that even if you feel a bit discouraged, um, you know, if you keep focusing on what's important and keeping that laser focus on what you're trying to do, that the next sort of exciting hurdle will present itself for you to put all your resources towards jumping over. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is there anything that you wish kind of that you had known before taking the plunge? Like, or even maybe somebody had mentioned something to you and you're like, oh no, I don't believe you, it'll be easier, or anything like that? Like, Oh boy. Um, where do I start? Uh, let's see. Um, one of the lessons I've learned is to not think, of, so this is kind of contradictory to everything I just talked about, about planning and whatnot, um, but maybe I can make the, the distinction. Um, not overthinking decisions. So I jumped literally jumped into this. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to wrap my brain to come up with that moment that I that I was like, oh, okay, this is fine. I can go and not make money. I don't even remember any conversations that we had. I think I just like jumped into it head first. And so um, that was great. But then once we got started, Kevin and I would overthink things like, uh, charging our customers. So we started as a free service because we were building this product that was very basic. Then we went to a freemium service. So we started, we had this basic uh, product and then we had the premium product which we were gonna put all of our new shiny features into. Well the problem was that we wanted to democratize ticketing and literally we wanted to give everybody every feature. And so we were having a really hard time making that distinction. We, we knew that we needed to go completely paid and we agonized over that decision. I mean, we took months to make that decision. And when we did, we realized that, well, we saw that, A, we, we didn't churn that many customers. We didn't have a, a lot of customers stop using us. And in fact, conversion increased because as a user, you came to Eventbrite and now you didn't have to think about, you didn't have to look at that list with the check marks of the features and like which one had which and decide, oh, well, I could live without that one, or you just went into the funnel. So actually, conversion increased along with our, our revenues, of course, and we were like, wow, why didn't we make that decision sooner? We've had a couple of those uh, scenarios pop up where we've really agonized over how we would um, affect the customer, 